Hi, welcome back to the Cuzzy Sound channel. If you watched my last vlog, which was uh, vlog 2 of 2021, you'll have heard that I intend to build a new kind of big project. That big project being a triple Baby 8 style sequencer. Um, I'm calling the project Triple Sec, as in triple sequencer. Yeah, sound <laughs> made sense. Um, the format for that, um, looking about what box to put it in and decided to stick with the Cuzzy Sound modular format so it's kind of 150 deep aluminium panels with m multiples of 50, that's millimetres, 50 millimetres width, so 50, 100, 150, that sort of thing. Uh, at least that's, that's, the, that's the thinking behind it. Um, so yeah, three sequences running from either a common clock or individual clocks. That's the basic idea of the design. So in this video I'm going to look at the clock module that I've started working on. Now to get multiple clocks I could either kind of just use lots of counters like the 555 but what I found has been used by people in the past quite successfully is to use the 4106 hex inverter and just basically set it up so that they are some uh, very low frequency oscillators basically it's a series of LFOs which generate a gate type output which you can use to clock a sequencer so that's the route I've gone down three sequencers, three clocks came to lay the panel out, I've got space for four let's have four clocks then I can actually break out and clock other things so it just expands the, the usability a bit. Fitting six on, on the small panel was going to be really tight as you'll see fitting four was, was bad enough in terms of squeezing everything in. So yeah, so basically using four of the inverters on the 4106 to create LFOs that I can use as clocks because they're square wave LFOs so it's gates. And the circuit looks like this. So I'm starting with a very, very simple circuit. There's no buffering on the outputs. That might be a challenge later. Um, I might have to look into that. But for now, I'm going to run it like this. Um, and so, yeah, it's just four LFOs. The unused ones are the unused inputs I've tied to ground. Um, somewhere I read that that's a good idea. And so, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, after that, it's, it's a potentiometer and um, a capacitor. What I have done on the outputs, I, there's a, a resistor, which is a current limiting resistor, and an LED, to, so I can actually see what rate each of the clocks is ticking at. Um, so that's the circuit, the very, very basic, very simple. There's no signal conditioning on this. As I say, mm, I might have to visit that later, but, but for now, let's stick with this. So the strip board layout for it looks like this. So it is just simply the chip in the middle there, um, the four capacitors, and then the breakout to the pots and, and the sockets. Um, very very straightforward. Okay and um, when I actually put the panel together um, the the back of it the circuit board looks like this so again total simplicity and the front of it looks like this. Now the one thing you will notice is that the switches are very very close to the pots. Um, I might have been able to move things slightly but been a bit of a squeeze so we'll see how it goes see what the functionality is like um, but this is the start of the project so this is kind of these are prototypes um, refinement comes later it's more about function at the moment okay talking about function we'll have a look at how it works um, I've got it set up here um, so we've got the the four clocks, the, the pots there for the speed settings and I'll explain the switches as we go through the demonstration um, but the top one is an on off um, the next three switches are an on, off, on so it's a, a single pole double throw but with the centre position as off and then you've got the output sockets 
What I'm actually doing for this demo, I'm actually just going to trigger drum machines with it. Um, I haven't built sequencers yet, so there's no point in trying to do that. But I can just use the clocks as triggers for um, drum modules on Project 12. And it, it'll be good enough to demonstrate what the switches and, and the controls actually do. So let's move in closer and have a look at the triple sec clock module in action. Here we are closer up. So just to recap, we've got clock one, two, three, four. We have a speed controller, switch, output socket, and an LED indicator, which will indicate the speed of the, uh, the clock output. The switches, the, the top switch is uh, a simple on-off switch. So up is off, down is on, which uh, the, the actual um, clocks are running all the time. All the switches do is, is connect or disconnect the clock to the sockets. The next three, these are a single pole double throw switch, which is on, off, on. So there's a center position, which is off. And then there are two positions, two switch positions up or down, which you can use to send the signal one way or another. I'll demonstrate what that does in a, in a moment. Um, in fact, let's let's do it now. What I'm doing here, um, as, I, as I said earlier, these, these are all going out to drum modules. So let's turn the top one on, and you get a, a lovely squelchy sound. You might be able to see in the background uh, a little red light flashing there. It's the drumish module on Project 12. It's actually a, a passive percussive module. Um, so if I turn the speed control it can go really slow quite fast. I want it to go down really slow because I want, I want to kind of be able to do a, a slow progressive um, sequence driving uh, VCOs or whatever, um, but be able to have several of them going at the same time that aren't necessarily completely synced. So one will drift away from the other and then back in again over a period of time. Um, and I kind of wanted to explore that effect in, in my music. Okay, the function of the other three switches, if I flick the switch up, You've now got the kick drum coming in. And you'll notice that the lights are blinking in together um, in sync. And that is because when I flick the switches up, and I'll do it with all of them in a moment, what it actually does, it, it connects the output from clock one to the socket or whichever clock you flick the switch up on. So, flick them all up. They're all connected to clock one, so they're all running at the same speed as clock one. Now, when I tried some other experiments with this, I connected the outputs to VCOs and tried to switch them all in so that they were all pulsing in sync. And by the time I got down to the fourth clock, everything went completely haywire. Now, as, as I said earlier, there's no um, conditioning on, on uh, this circuit. One way around that would probably be to buffer the output of each of the, uh, the, the clocks. Um, you can do that with a, a TL074 quad op amp. There's four clocks, you get four op amps. And if you look at something like the buffered patch module in Project 12, um, it's, it'd be a similar process to what I used on that. Now, back to the switches, if we flick the switch down then what's happening now is the relevant clock is now patched to its output. I can go on to the next one and I can switch that, still switch that one up and get it synced with clock one off or running on its own clock 
and then the same again with the bottom one. And of course, all the independent controls. That'll still work. And I can switch any of them in and out as I want. Now, if, if I've got them all linked to one and I switch one off, everything stops. Switch one on, everything starts. Switch them back to the independent blocks. And I can turn them off independently. And if I switch one off, the others still keep going because they're no longer linked. You see, they're all linked to their own. So there you go. Um, it's a very, very basic circuit um, there is room for improvement buffering being one of them um, I don't know whether I'm going to get problems with bounce on the switches but you can always put simple debounce circuits on the switches so there's lots of ways you can kind of improve on this circuit and um, people have built similar circuits to this and built in all sorts of improvements and you can you can just expand it and get get more and more sophisticated but what I wanted to do was start as simple as I could, see how it worked, and then if I needed to address something, then develop the circuit from there. It's they're very simple and very cheap, so it's not costing me a lot of money to to kind of go through this process. And I think that the one thing that I'm probably going to do with this is to uh, add the the buffers to each of the outputs. So a TL074, an extra chip added to it, it doesn't even need any other extra components because you just put a feedback. Um, link in there um, and and yeah I think I've got something that will actually do what I want it to do and it's very simple so I've shown you the circuit diagram I've shown you a strip board layout if you want a, a simple uh, clock module that you can trigger several things with then go on have a go build your own <laughs>